Hey everybody, one of the most uh, challenging things that I found when I was setting up my YNAB um, budget was that my partner and I uh, use an app called Splitwise to track payments where we pay for things for each other and then reimburse each other and keep a running track of that. And the issue, um, I've seen it, the issue come up a, a lot of times on the forum and on the support and on Reddit. How do you actually manage it? And so I wanted to show you the system that I've used to automatically import uh, um, splitwise entries into YNAB um, and how I quickly reconcile them and bring them, you know, take them out of the appropriate category. So <clears throat> the first thing that I do is set up a budget account, an unlinked um, budget account called uh, Splitwise. And I treat this account as a credit card. Don't ask me why I've done that, but the thing is that it, it will go into a negative balance. And if it goes into a negative balance because I owe my partner money, um, I want that money to be sitting there taken out of those individual categories and then held as a cre like a credit card uh, money to be able to pay off that debt to my partner if I have to. So I set it up as a credit card. And then the next thing that we do is use a an app called Zapier or Zapier. Now I use Zapier for work, so this was a normal thing for me, but I'm just gonna run you through the two zaps that I made. And what Zap what Zapier does is connect uh, connect splitwise in this case to YNAB. So it can sync and every time a new uh, a new transaction gets tracked in Zap in Splitwise, it'll automatically set up the correct transaction in YNAB. So for me, this works because I only have essentially one person that I use Splitwise with. I think you could probably figure out how to make this system work for multiple people. Um, but in this case, look, this example is just for when you're dealing with one person, which I think is probably the most common use case. Uh, or at least that seems to be what it is. So let's look at what we have here. We have we, we, we make two different zaps. There's one called Splitwise iPaid. So this is when I paid for the thing, when I actually paid for it, and then my partner Tamara owes me money. And there's another one called Splitwise Tams Paid. And this is where Tamara paid and I, her, I owe her money. So let's start off with the first step. There's a new expense in Splitwise. So we connect our account and we select new expense. We log into our Splitwise account so that it can sync that information. And then group ID. In this case, Tamara and I, what we do is we don't use a group. We do non-group expenses, but you could use an actual group as well which actually might be good in terms of if you, if you are dealing with multiple people, uh, you could maybe have different groups and then maybe you could set up zaps that only read from those groups, which could be cool. But in this case, for me, non-group expenses, and then it'll pull an example. So the next thing that we've got is a couple of filters. So before you have it create an action, you can actually do a filtering. I've accidentally set this up as two steps. This filter could just be one filter, but what I want to do is because this is the I paid one, it, it will only continue if it's created by first name uh, contains Dave, which is me. Um, if it's a payment that Tamara's created, this zap will ignore that and not run. Whereas the Tamara paid one has the opposite filter. It will say, Does Tamara, did Tamara pay? And if Tamara paid, then it will run, but this one won't. I also have another step, another only continue with filter. So you can find these by going hitting add and then looking for the filter by Zapier. Um, the next one I've got is only continue with description does not contain payment. So when you are using Splitwise and you go to settle up with your partner or friend, uh, it will actually register that as a transaction, a, a transaction that has the description payment. And you don't want that to be pulled into your YNAB because that will create a duplicate.
If your friend is paying you, that money will arrive in your checking account or bank account. And if you're paying them, that money will leave your checking account or, or bank account. And I'll explain what you do when that happens. But you don't want to register uh, a settle up payment because nothing's actually been purchased. So you'll do a don't uh, only continue if the text of the transaction, the description does not contain payment. So then you're ready to actually create the YNAB and this is where the detail is. So we look for YNAB as the action and we create a transaction. You'll choose your YNAB account and then this is the fun part. So the account is splitwise, which is that credit card account that you created. Then the amount will be, so we're just talking about the, the, the I paid and I'll show you the difference between the I paid and then the, the other person paid with the others app. But with this one, this is the one when you've paid for an expense, you make the amount, the repayments amount from the splitwise transaction. You just type today for the date. So that no, so that matter what date it is, it'll always be pulled in as today because it'll be synced in real time. Uh, you will select an existing payee and you'll set up your partner or friend as the payee. You'll pick them from the list of payees that you've got set up inside YNAB. Uh, categorize, you will pick uncategorized because you don't know, you know, it could be a number of different types of things. It's your job to categorize them. The memo, for simplicity, I use the description from Splitwise. So in this case, rent. Is it cleared or uncleared? Um, you could do cleared here, but I just do uncleared and then I clear it manually and approved no. And then you don't have to do anything for these. And then that's good to go. And then that will pull in a transaction. So what, what happens here is that when you've paid for something, that's actually going to take that transaction. It's going to look at your portion that, that you know, you're part of it. So say Tamara and, I, and, and myself, let's say... Let's say I've paid for, I've paid for coffee. No, let's find another example here. Uh, man, Tamara's been paying for everything recently. Okay, I've paid for petrol. I've paid for petrol. I've gone to the petrol station. I've put $30 of petrol in the car and we want to split it. So I put it into Splitwise. I say I purchased $30, split equally. What that immediately does is it pulls the Zapier will pull that transaction into this splitwise category. In this case, the pay will be Tamara. I just leave all these splitwises as Tamara because it makes it easier. Um, I select living expenses, expenses transformation. The memo is the original description, so that's easy. And it will treat this as an inflow because a $30 expense has come from my credit card to the, to the, petrol, uh, the petrol station. And then there'll be a $15 inflow into my transportation category because Tamara owes me that. And when that, when she actually, uh, that will either add, take away from the balance of money I owe her, or it will add to the money she owes me and it will be made up in another way, or she could settle up or I could settle up. So that's the transaction. So if you've paid and your partner owes you money, then that's an inflow when that event happens. If your partner pays and it's you owing them money, it's an, it's an outflow. So let's look at the difference really quickly with the other event. So this is, we've covered the one where you've paid and then this is the one where the other person has paid. So it's the exact same information um, on Splitwise, everything's the same. The only difference is in this filter, you wanna have the created by first name contains the other person's Splitwise name. Um, this filter about description does not contain payment, will stay exactly the same. And then with this um, transaction, everything's the same except the repayment about amount now has a hyphen in front of it. It's negative. And this means that it's an outflow. So when Tamara pays and I have to, uh, so she buys a coffee and puts it into Splitwise, buys me a coffee, puts it into Splitwise, that's now a $4 expense from my Splitwise account. 
Uh, today is the same, uh, pay type, all the same, uncategorized the same, description, everything else is the same. You're just basically putting a negative there. So you can actually start by making one zap and then you can duplicate it and make a second one. So that's the two of those um, set up. So now your expenses are coming in and every time you create something new, it'll arrive in here within 10 minutes or so and then you're able to give it a category uh, and approve it and clear it and then that creates a balance. Okay, so now that you've got a balance with your partner, what do you actually do to settle that up or what happens when you settle up your balance? So say you owe your partner $100. Um, you will transfer them $100 from your bank account. You will uh, settle up in Splitwise. But then what you'll do when that transaction from your bank account gets pulled into YNAB um, is you will categorize that uh, as when you are setting the payee. Rather than setting the payee as your partner's name, you actually set it as a transfer to... Um, to Splitwise, to the Splitwise card, as if you were making a payment on a credit card. So let's take an example. We've got a payment here to Zoom, but let's just pretend we would actually adjust the payee and make it payment to Splitwise. And the same thing would happen if our partner had settled up and they were paying us $100. We would make that a payment from Splitwise. So if your partner owes you $100, it's sitting there as a $100 positive balance in Splitwise. You would, um, they would send you that money, it would arrive in your account, it would come into YNAB and you would categorize it as a payment from um, Splitwise. And that, that may or may not be the best way to do it, but I found that that works really, really well. Um, and it always keeps everything beautifully balanced and really, really simple. So guys, hopefully that helps you um, to figure out how to set up Splitwise to have those transactions be automated. Um, and if you've got any comments, um, feedback or questions, leave them in the comments uh, beneath and I'll try my best to answer them. There's probably some aspects to this that I could explain a little bit better. So if there's anything that's confusing you uh, or that you're not sure about, then let me know. Um, and if your situation is a little bit different and you would need um, advice on or you you would want to know how to make this work for your scenario, then let me know in the comments and maybe I'll be able to um, give you some suggestions as well and try and think up ways that it could work for your situation. So I think Splitwise can work really, really well with YNAB. Um, the system that I've been using here has been working incredibly well. There might be certain parts of it that are not like not the right way to go about it, but I, th I think it, it's fitting in extremely well with my YNAB in general. And it, it, it's, it's been very, very convenient to have these transactions automatically come in to manage that balance, to make sure that there's uh, all, my, all my categories are accurate. Um, so yeah, look, hopefully that helps um, and good luck uh, using Splitwise and YNAB and using Zapier for the first time. Thanks.